you know, um, we don't normally bring our phones to the shop of the shark tank. Um, but the scatter feed is just happening. Rachel's got a big bucket full of some tasty treats. What have we got there, Rachel? We've got some prawns, some fish, squid, some mussels, lots of different things. Yeah, a nice mixture, a seafood mixture. Um, and if you have a look down, you can see some of our larger fish uh, coming up for the scatter feed. Um, and our very naughty turtle <laughs> has just come into the picture as well. Uh, this is Friday. Um, now the big fish that you can see swimming around, these guys are our jacks and these guys are related to tuna, uh, but they're quite a bit smaller. Um, it does mean they're very fast. You can see they're all pretty hungry. They're jumping up. Um, ah, Logan's just asked, what's your favorite shark? Uh, my favorite shark in this tank uh, is definitely our sand tiger sharks. Um, these are also called raggy tooth sharks because uh, they've got really sharp teeth, they're amazing. Um, and we'll get to see them being fed uh, very soon. <laughs> they're definitely my favourites. So you can see all the fish jumping up, getting the mussel and the prawns. <laughs> Very nice. And Friday, trying to get a little snack too. Oh, um, one of our sharks has just swum underneath that citron, our lemon shark. Uh, <laughs> and the sand tiger that I just mentioned, uh, my favourite shark, um, she's just swimming along as well. She can smell the fish. They're beautiful. These sharks are about two and a half metres long. They're amazing. She's got a really pointy nose. <laughs> And these sharks are normally asleep. They sleep for hours and hours every day. But then they wake up when they start to smell the food in the water. Um, now our stingrays are just about to be fed, so we're gonna head off there and have a little look at them. Um, just under where his eyes are. <laughs> the noise they make is brilliant. <laughs> so while our stingrays are getting fed, uh, our lovely turtle Friday also gets fed. Um, now with Friday, his feeding's a little bit different. Uh, Friday has um, enrichment every day, about three times a day. Um, today he's got uh, his feeding uh, tube, um, it's like a red circle um, and Friday's been taught to follow that circle um, and you can see he's doing it really well um, and when he's followed it correctly he'll get rewarded with some food um, and this enrichment helps keep him nice and calm when he's feeding because he can get quite excited um, and it's also a form of play as well um, to help keep him entertained, it's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, 
Well, Friday is a vegetarian. Uh, all green adult turtles are vegetarian. Um, and he does, unfortunately, still quite like the taste of squid and fish. Uh, so he's swam off towards Emily and the stingrays. Um, but hopefully he'll start coming back again. You might be able to see his shell under the water. He's coming back. <laughs> so can we have a look in Friday's lunchbox? He's got some delicious vegetables. Uh, he's got some cucumber, uh, some red bell peppers. I believe these are his favorites. Uh, and some lettuce uh, and a little bit of cauliflower as well. Um, so if you guys like eating your vegetables, so does Friday. <laughs> He's following his target again. Is he normally pretty good at following his target, Rachel? When he wants to be. When he wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> And has Friday got any teeth? Uh, I don't think so, he just has a hard beak. Okay. So he's got a beak a little bit like a bird. Watching Chomper's lettuce. <laughs> and Friday is a reptile, so he breathes air, so he does pop up quite a bit. So Friday has swum away again. He's annoying Emily. <laughs> See if we can spot him. He's still hanging over by the stingrays. So the reason he goes near the stingrays uh, is because they're pretty messy eaters. Their teeth are very blunt. Um, if you watched our rock pool video on Monday, uh, you will have seen the, the little tiny stingray chewing his food. These guys are just the same. Um, they slurp it around in their mouths, trying to mush it until they can swallow it down. Um, and often they'll drop, <laughs> they'll drop their food. And then Friday's there underneath, ready to hoover it up. <laughs> it's very naughty. Um, but Rachel's putting the, his target up and down in the water and banging it on the side, trying to get his attention. Um, oh, and it's successful, it's worked. <laughs> He's coming back again. <laughs> So we give Friday lots of different vegetables um, and we treat him at Christmas and Halloween. Uh, have a little guess as to what you think he might get on those two dates, Christmas and Halloween. <laughs> so we'll give him some sprouts at Christmas, which he loves, and at Halloween we'll give him pumpkins full of lettuce. Delicious. <laughs> oh, and hello to everyone who's um, commented in to say that they're watching. There's lots of people all over, which is lovely to see. Um, I'm glad you're all so interested in sharks and turtles. That's wonderful. <laughs> so Charlie has just asked whether the turtle or the sharks have a more powerful bite. That's a really good question. Um, really good question. I'd say the sharks probably, as the sharks are predators and they have to chomp on fish and fish bones, uh, whereas our lovely turtle only has to eat uh, vegetables um, and in the wild he'd eat things like seagrass and seaweed so his bite doesn't have to be too strong. Um, but good question. <laughs> and he's back again. <laughs> So in the wild, uh, these green sea turtles um, have lots of algae growing on their backs. Um, and little fish come along and they eat the algae. Uh, but we don't have those little fish in this tank. Um, so every Friday afternoon, uh, we get a scrubbing brush and we tempt Friday to the top of the tank and we give his shell a nice scrub. Um, and he loves it, it kind of tickles him. Um, he gets very excited. <laughs> I think now we'll head over to see Ian feeding our lovely sand tiger sharks. So if you want to come around this way. Oh, 
Ian, um, one of our another amazing biologists, and he is feeding our sand tigers. Um, their food is prepared in front of us here. They've all got their very own lunch boxes. So here you can see we've got Howie's, and Howie has got a lovely bit of mackerel on a stick, with some bits of squid. Um, we've got Yushaka, um, who's the other female, and then we've got Mandela as well, who's the male. <laughs> um, so, has anyone eaten yet? Yeah, so far Mandela has come on. He got in quite early, actually. Um, he doesn't get in early, sometimes he doesn't get on the feet. Because he's a little fella, and the girls can sometimes push him out of the way. Uh, so he's had a bit. Hopefully he'll come back round. The other two haven't shown up yet. Um, but they can be quite a leisurely feet. They can be quite slow. Um, so it's got to be patient and wait. Mm. Uh, hopefully it'll be a long one. Okay. <laughs> All the other sharks are coming fast. Every shark <laughs> that I don't want to feed has been there. So we've got the lemon shark. Uh, there's another shark down there. One of the sandbars just went past. Um, the sand tiger is uh, staying away at the minute. Uh, I think that's how it's over there. It can be quite hard to tell them apart when they're far away. But she's quite light in colour, so I think that's her. Um, Sabine is just feeding our sandbar sharks and our lemon shark. Um, now, sharks are really intelligent animals, um, so we've trained all our sharks to recognise targets. And there's a big target in the water just in front of Sabine. It's a big white square with a black circle on it. Um, and this target, as I said, is for the sandbars and the lemon shark. And when that target goes into the water, these guys know it's time for their lunch. Uh, so they'll swim up to it. So you can see a sandbar just swimming past us here. Uh, she went up to it just a second ago. Um, and the other sharks know that's not their target, so they tend to leave it alone. <laughs> ah, um, Max has asked, uh, why don't the sharks eat the fish in the water, but they eat the fish in the pot? And that's an excellent question. Um, and one of the reasons the sharks don't eat the fish uh, is because of this target training. Um, so the sharks learn that they only feed when they see their targets. Um, and sharks, uh, despite what some people think, are actually incredibly lazy animals. If you look down in the water now, uh, you'll see um, our, one of our female sand tigers. She's currently fast asleep. She's barely moving. Um, these sharks, they're just so lazy. They'd much rather wait for us to feed them a dead fish uh, than waste energy swimming around the tank trying to catch other fish. <laughs> but that's a really good question. If you look over this side, uh, you'll see Emily feeding our lovely nurse sharks. Um, and what are you doing here, Emily? So, uh, we've got three nurse sharks. That one there is Julia, who is just spat out the food. <laughs> and so we've got one there. And Junior is the male, and they're trained to this ball. Um, and it has a clicker on it as well, basically to help reinforce that training. So what they should do is swim up to the target, and they should um, follow it. And then if they follow it, we can give them a piece of food similar to Friday. But these guys are still are still learning, so a little bit slow. Um, and they're a little bit fussy about what they eat sometimes as well, which is why uh, Junior spat out his squid. But we've got plenty of food for all of them. Um, and if you have a little look, we've got three separate lunch boxes. 
So we've got one for Florence, one for Blondie, and one for Junior. So all of their food has already been weighed out, so we know um, we can weigh it again at the end of the feed, and then we'll know exactly how much food they've taken, minus that one squid that Junior spat out earlier. Ooh, how many rows of teeth do sharks have? Um, so it kind of varies based on the type of shark. Um, so for example, our lemon shark is just swimming beneath us now, um, and our sand tiger shark is just swimming past there as well. Um, because of the nature of their teeth, they've got those classic really kind of pointy teeth. So they have lots and lots of rows of teeth, but they're not using all of them at the same time. Um, so what they do is they use that front row of teeth to chew their food. And then they've got anywhere from usually between about four and seven extra rows of teeth. Um, sorry. Um, anywhere between four and seven extra rows of teeth so that if one of their teeth at the front falls out, the tooth behind it basically just jumps forwards and takes its spot. And then all of the teeth behind that would also jump forwards and then they can grow their new tooth at the back of their mouth so they never have to swim around with a big annoying gap like we do when we're children. Um, they've always got nice pointy teeth there so they can always get their food. Um, Zach has asked, uh, why do sharks lie on the bottom of the tank? Um, and that's another really good question. So uh, some of the sharks in here, um, like our lemon shark just swimming past, um, these guys can't lie on the bottom because they have to keep swimming around uh, with their mouths open to keep water flooding over their gills. Um, but some species of shark, um, like our lovely nurse shark, so like Junior, just swimming up here with his lovely birthmark on his back, these guys um, are specially adapted to be able to stay still and push water over their gills by opening their mouth um, and just sort of squirting it back over their gills. So some sharks have to keep swimming and some sharks can lie on the bottom. And they lie on the bottom to rest. Um, so our sand tigers, uh, when they're swimming around, they are using a lot of energy, but our lovely nurse sharks can just lie on the bottom and have a nap. <laughs> Oh, someone's asked, why does one of the nurse sharks have a different colour on its body? Um, now that nurse shark is Junior, he's just swimming up to us now. Um, and that mark is a birthmark. So just like we humans have birthmarks, so do some animals. Um, so it's unique to him. None of our other nurse sharks have that mark. It's his lovely birthmark. And it's really handy because it helps us tell him apart from the others. not yellow and that's a really good question because uh, most lemon sharks are bright yellow which is where they get their name from and um, citron is actually a really old lemon shark um, he's swimming under us now um, in the wild these guys live until they're about 24 years old and citron is around 37 so he's super old and unfortunately as he's getting older and older he's getting grayer and grayer uh, much like us so he has unfortunately lost his colouring, but he did used to be bright yellow. <laughs> and there's 
another sand tiger swimming past us. Oh, and the eagle ray is in So we'll come down here to watch our eagle nose. Ray is having a feed. Uh, Rachel's feeding them today. Uh, and there's already one of them uh, ready and waiting for his lunch. So these are our eagle nose rays. They're quite a bit different to the southern rays. The southern rays are big and round. I don't know if you can see, there's one right on the bottom of the tank down there. The big round rays um, with long tails. These guys have got a pointy nose and pointy fins. Um, and these guys uh, have these targets here. So like we saw, Citron and the sandbars had their black circle target and our nurse sharks had their yellow ball. These guys have got this white circle with a black cross on it um, and the light comes on as well. Oh, Ruben's just asked, could you scuba dive with the sharks and the turtle? Absolutely. Um, our biologists get in this tank twice a week um, and if you're ever here, um, during the day in the aquarium you'll see them uh, through the glass and they go into the tank mostly to do cleaning so they'll go along the glass and if you have a tank at home you'll know you get lots of algae growing on the glass so they'll have a sponge and they'll scrub it and make it nice and clean um, and then they'll go right to the bottom and they might do a little bit of feeding as well um, and the sharks are absolutely fine with the divers the sharks swim past them and they take absolutely no notice um, it's the turtle who is a little bit of a pain. He's super friendly um, to the point where it's slightly annoying. Uh, <laughs> and so every time the scuba divers go in, there'll be one diver who's on turtle duty and they'll go in uh, with sort of a pole. So when Friday's getting a little bit too close, they can just nudge him away um, and try and distract him because <laughs> he, he's quite fond of the divers. Uh, but yes, they do go in twice a week. <laughs> So our eagle nose rays are feeding now. Um, you might be able to see uh, the front of their face gets really flat when they're feeding. It spreads out. Um, normally it's pointed. Um, and that's because uh, sharks and rays, they've got a sixth sense. So we humans have five senses. Sharks have an extra one, um, extra two in fact. Uh, but their one in their nose um, is the ampullae of Lorenzini. Um, and these are little cells that mean they can sense um, electricity in the water. So when these guys are feeding, especially, they'll push their nose out nice and flat. So you can see this one's doing it here, coming up to his food. <laughs> um, so we've got three eagle nose rays in this tank. Um, and we are the only aquarium in the UK who's captive bred these guys. Um, these guys are really endangered in the wild. Um, we've got the only breeding program, we're the only people who've been successful. Um, and we've had one little baby so far, which is really exciting. Um, they're very cute when they're born. These stingrays give birth to live young. Um, and when he came out, he was kind of wrapped up like a little burrito with his uh, wings over his head. Um, he's tiny, he's amazing. <laughs> so as I said earlier, this is the Atlantic Ocean tank and it's lovely and warm in here. Samuel has just asked, uh, which is the biggest species of shark in your tank? Um, and that would be our sand tigers, the raggy tooths with the sharp teeth, um, who Ian over on the other side uh, is attempting to feed, but they have been ignoring him a little bit today. Um, they're our biggest species of shark. They're cousins of great whites, so they are pretty big. Um, now we're going to head around the corner and have a look at some more feeding. Thank you, Rachel.
our lovely male zebra shark. Um, so I'm just this and then I'll show you. So um, Zeus's target is this very lovely stripy pole. Um, so he's trained so that he'll come over to it and then he'll actually follow the target around a little bit like Friday. He's not quite as agile as Friday, um, but he does give it a good old go and he's getting really, really good at following it. Um, so it's basically just another form of enrichment for him, similarly to how it is for Friday as well. So he's just getting some squid today. Lovely little squid, one of his favourites. <laughs> and why is the target black and white? Um, it's just, it's a really obvious colour to them. So they're really high contrast in stripes. Um, basically make it really obvious and make it stand out to them. It's quite a big prank and there's quite a lot of stuff going on. So we want our targets to be as noticeable to them as possible. Um, and also a little bit different with their pattern than the targets of the other animals. So because this one's got stripes, um, none of the other targets have stripes on them. So it makes it stand out for him a little bit more. So he's not going to get confused. Oh, if you have a look over at Ian, uh, you'll see he's just trying to feed the sand tiger. Did she get it? Oh, yay, success! <laughs> uh, who was that? Howie, excellent. So Howie's our second largest sand tiger. You can see her swimming in the middle of the tank there. Um, She's chomping on the fish and she'll go and swallow it whole. Have a look. Oh, we've got some tasty squid on the stick now and Ian's going to put it near to her shirts. Oh, maybe we scared her, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to know why don't sharks have any bones that's a really good question um, so sharks they don't have any bones in their body uh, but if you grab hold of your ears right now and give them a little wiggle wiggle your ears around and wiggle your nose um, that stuff you can feel it's cartilage um, and that's what the sharks bodies are made of now if sharks had bones they'd be really heavy when we get into water we sink because our bones are heavy um, and we've also got joints which make it a little difficult for us to swim. But because the shark's body is made of cartilage, that keeps them nice and light in the water so they don't have to spend much energy staying up. Um, and it also means they can swim um, really smoothly. So if you watch them going past, they don't have any awkward joints like we do when we swim. They just glide through the water. Beautiful. And that's Citroen again, just swimming past us. <laughs> showing off how well he can swim with all his lovely cartilage. Something interesting you might notice with the sand tigers is when they're swimming, they're really slow. Um, so I don't know if you can make out one down there, I think that's Mandela, but you'll see he swims much slower than the North Shark here. Um, now the shark, if they, North Sharks, if they don't swim really fast, they will sink. Um, they're not super heavy, but they will still sink. Uh, so the sand tigers get around that by actually swallowing air into the stomach. And they can inflate their stomach a bit like a fish uh, inflates its swim bladder. So that can make them neutrally buoyant and allow them to swim uh, really slowly. They can basically hover in the water. Um, and that's all part of their strategy for getting their food in the wild. A lot of sharks will chase their food down, but the sand tigers will actually um, sneak up on a fish and ambush it that way. Uh, that means also that they don't use a lot of energy. The metabolisms are quite slow because they don't swim that much. 
uh, so they don't necessarily eat that much, which explains why I'm still standing here with buckets full of food. Um, they can eat a lot when they want to, but they don't necessarily need to do it all the time. Um, so hopefully one of them will come back over and take a bit more. But if they don't, the food is not going to go to waste. We'll be able to chop it up and feed it to some of the other animals here, uh, especially the southerns. They're always quite hungry, uh, the southern stingrays. Um, and then we'll just get them a bit less out tomorrow. <laughs> Friday's coming up. Say hello, man. <laughs> Friday though, he's just chancing his luck. He's gone around to see if he can get some extra scraps off of anyone. <laughs> Ooh, there's a barracuda just swimming uh, past the screen now. <laughs> and our lemon shark again, citron, coming past. Followed by some jacks. at the same time. Oh, it doesn't want it. Someone's just asked, what qualifications do you need to work in an aquarium and feed the fish? Um, Ian, what qualifications do you have? Um, the main one, I guess, is for me, is I've got a degree, uh, a bachelor's in marine biology. Um, it's definitely recommended, but it's not essential. Uh, you can get into this line of work uh, through other routes. You can do volunteering and build up your expertise that way. Um, or you might work on um, in commercial aquaculture. Uh, I think most common um, is to, to have a bachelor's like myself. Um, also, we do a lot of diving here, so you need diving qualifications. That's not strictly true for every aquarium. A lot of other aquariums have got much smaller tanks, and so they don't need to dive. Um, but to work here, it's fairly essential. <laughs> Right, I think that's feeding time over for these guys. I've given them the 30 minutes. Okay, thank you all for tuning in today um, and watching us uh, feed the lovely animals here. And thank you to all our biologists as well uh, for doing all the feeding. Um, if you choose to give us a donation, um, we've got a link uh, at the bottom of this page. Um, if you'd like to click on that. Um, we're a self-funded charity, so we'd really appreciate it, but don't worry if you can't at this time. Um, and thank you all for listening, and we will post some more stuff in the next few days. Thank you!